Hi everyone. Uh, welcome to DDI. This is our first Facebook live feed, so we're trying out something new. My name is Beth Alms, and I'm here with Dr. Tacey Byam. She is our CEO, and we're going to be talking about women in leadership. As many of you may know, International Women's Day is coming up on March 8th, uh, and Tacey has become something of a celebrity in talking about her campaign, Lead Like a Girl. Uh, she's going to be giving a webinar on March 8th, so we're just going to talk a little bit about um, Lead Like a Girl, and tell me, what inspired you to start that campaign? Well, you might recognize the title because it is linked to the Like a Girl campaign that always um, did a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. um, they, they're a Procter & Gamble company, right. and they had a whole media push, and then a Super Bowl commercial, which is the pinnacle of everything. Yes. And in, in the commercial, it's very powerful. Um, it shows young girls and boys of different ages, and they ask them, ask them to throw like a girl and run like a girl. And interestingly, when they get into the teenage years, you actually see them doing things when it's throw like a girl, it's quite a wimpy throw. Right. Um, and run like a girl is not that um, commanding of the way you would do it. But when you take young girls, elementary, and ask them to do the same thing, they're running like the wind. They're feeling empowered. And their question is, when did the word girl become something that is negative or derogatory or weak associated with it? And it's also tied to the fact that this confidence and feelings of empowerment um, actually drop when girls go through puberty in their adolescent years. And so I looked at that and felt very, very inspired. Um, I wanted to take back the word girl as something strong in business, something powerful, something motivating to that, which is why I've been speaking a lot on lead like a girl. So when it comes to young women, do you think that young girls and young women are inspired to be leaders and step up into those positions of leadership? You know, that's a really interesting question. Um, I'm a mother, and I'm sure there's mothers out there um, who are thinking about this themselves. Um, we scientifically approach that question because um, for decades, uh, DDI has been helping the world's leading global organizations select the next level of leaders. So helping people look down inside the organization and saying, oh, this person has the potential to step up and the enthusiasm to step up and be a leader. Well, scientifically, regarding young girls, we asked the same question. We did uh, a research project recently looking at um, global boys and girls and looking at them at different ages, toddlers, hitting into adolescence, sure. and then into high school, into early 20s. And what was their enthusiasm for leadership? Mm -hmm. And what is striking is that toddlers have equal enthusiasm, boys and girls. On a scale, just so you know, on a scale of, of uh, 5.0, it's about a 4.2. That's pretty good. For toddlers. For toddlers. Wow. Really okay. interested, really engaged, wanting to be a leader. And um, and I, you all can picture this in the toddlers you've all had and raised your, <laughs> yourselves around there. But when you hit adolescence, for both boys and girls, it drops. I think it has to do with, you know, adolescence is all not wanting to stand out, wanting to fit in, wanting to be one of a group. If we all not, think back to that age. Yeah, I think so. <laughs> awkward time, not wanting to be a leader. But then you think about what happens after that. And this is where I think we have work to do because it diverges. Boys skyrocket in their interest and enthusiasm for leadership. They jump up to 4.5, higher than it's ever been. Girls rebound a li little bit, but only a little bit, to 3.5 on a five-point scale. So right there is where we've got work to do. We have to work with adolescent girls, help them understand their worth, their value, what unique things they bring, and help them ignite their impact as a leader and as a young girl and a young woman in business for the future. So with girls, it seems like it's really, it's not a matter of nature. They, they're they early on inspired to do it, and they never even regain that enthusiasm that they had as toddlers. I know. So if that's where they are at, you know, when they're 18 to 22 years old, just about entering the workforce, do you think that that has any repercussions down the road as far as 
what we see in business. Yeah, it absolutely does. I mean, just to give you some numbers, I, I think it's striking that the percentage of people that graduate from college is 57% women. Wow. And when you hit the workforce, 53% of the workforce is women. But when you think about excelling, accelerating up the corporate ladder, it continues to drop. And so when you go to first level leaders and mid level leaders and you finally get to be senior leaders and in the C suite, that's less than twenty percent in global companies is women. Wow. And of the Fortune five hundred CEOs, only five percent of them are women. And here's a factoid, there's actually more CEOs named John <laughs> than there are women CEOs right now. So I just gave you some numbers, but the really devastating problem is the fact that they've not shifted in over a decade. So any focus, if any, on helping accelerate women in business and helping move up the corporate ladder hasn't been having the significant and lasting impact. And one of the things that people tend to point at is what's holding women back is that confidence issue right. that's tied back to the, the like a girl that drops for us all in adolescence and as we move up. Um, I mean, there's two researchers, Kay and Shipman, they're both broadcasters mm -hmm. actually, and they looked at um, corporate CEOs, amazing country leaders, um, politicians, people who have arrived, and they found a big difference between men and women in that the, there was an undercurrent for the women of self-doubt and a lack of confidence, even though they had already achieved the pinnacle of what they wanted. So we need to change the talk track in mm -hmm. young girls' lives, early career women, and even mid-career women about what they're capable of doing and how they can ignite their impact. Are businesses making that a big priority or is it really, or is that push really coming from women? That is such a great question, and I could not be more inspired by the activities that businesses have done this year around creating better gender parity. Um, I happened to be in the UK over the summer, and one of the things that was going on there outside of Brexit, which was, of course, really big news, um, was I, I, um, when I was there, there was a um, charter for women in finance. And so the top financial organizations, so think Barclays Bank, mm -hmm. think um, you know Bank of New York Mellon's branch in, there in London, think the London Stock Exchange. Um, they were signing on to this charter that they wanted to, to create gender parity. They were putting a signature to a line. They were publicly stating this. They were naming the, a person in their organization, oftentimes their CEO, as the person responsible for this. They were declaring what their numbers were. They were declaring what their target was going to be within the next five years. And so that sort of accountability is truly going to make a difference. And so that happened in the UK, came back, and we had um, equal pay day in the United States. Right. And, uh, um, and you might remember uh, a number of top companies uh, were at the White House with President Obama yes. um, mm -hmm. signing, and we had uh, Nike and Anheuser-Busch, but then also Facebook and Google and some mm -hmm. tech companies who said they wanted to eradicate any difference in um, the pay gap and any difference in women in leadership within the organizations. So again, that type of visibility and accountability, I think is really gonna make a difference. I find all that very inspiring. Um, but one thing I've been noticing as, I'm, as I've paid attention to International Women's Day, which is coming up, one of the big things they're talking about is the fact that the World Economic Forum put out a new report that says it's still going to be 170 years until gender equality worldwide, right. and that, that number has actually gone up right. in the last year. Um, so DDI is a global company. Right. Um, what do you think are some of the biggest challenges on a global scale that are facing women? So um, it, there are absolute differences um, for uh, the opportunities that um, young women have in business around the world. And so I really like um, what a lot of global organizations such as Coca-Cola is doing, which is empowering female entrepreneurs um, uh, by helping touch them. And then you think about them as resellers of their products. Um, as we move forward, what organizations need to do is mirror the people that we're working with, our clientele, um, our customers, our more, the decision-making power 
is more in the hands of women. And so that's very powerful. Specifically, what DDI is doing for International Women's Day is we have partnered with Womb to Read. Okay. And if you're not familiar with them, uh, they do incredible work, um, particularly with adolescent girls, middle school girls. And they're empowering them with the tools and the skills that they need to step up and ignite their own impact and be more of themselves. So they're getting them books. They're teaching them skills like negotiation, um, additional life skills and early leadership skills. And so we're really pleased to work with them because they're doing this around the world mm -hmm. with um, uh, parts of the education system that really are in need. And so that's our partner for International Women's Day to try to, um, to tackle it uh, in your career and help tackle it globally um, early on. That's great. Thank you so much, Tacey, for talking with me a little bit about women in leadership. Um, I hope that you guys all join us for Tacey's webinar on March 8th. Uh, from now until then, we're going to keep this conversation going. So we're going to be on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, talking a lot about women in leadership and how we can improve that. So we'd like you to join us. Uh, pay attention. Tell us your stories and share with us. And on March 8th with the webinar, um, I believe all of the proceeds are going to run. They are. Read, right? Yep. So, so invite your friends. Uh, this is not just for women. It's for men, too, who want to improve gender equality in the workplace. So gather your friends. Join us for the webinar. And remember that you're not only helping yourselves and the women that you know, but also all these young girls worldwide Excellent. get a better education and hopefully be tomorrow's leaders. Thank you all so much for joining us.